Welcome one, welcome all to the Snail Trail 4x4 podcast. If you like going off-roading in Toyotas, wrenching on Toyotas, camping in Toyotas, maybe even poking a little bit of fun at Toyotas, and of course, hearing about how awesome ARP studs are, then this is the podcast for you. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm your host today, Tyler, and sitting here on next to me on the recording studio couch in recording studio C, <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> since we have like 15 of them, is the one and only Jimmy Jet, Mr. Jimmy Jet, Mr. Jet, Mr. James, Jimmy, Mr. Hydro. How are you <laughs> today? <laughs> the only one you didn't hit this time was Jim. <laughs> Jim, Jimbo. Yeah. Or is that somebody else? Uh, well, that is somebody else mm-hmm. in my life, but I mean, mm-hmm. I've been called Jimbo also, so... Okay. I mean, I've been, I really have gone through James, Jimmy, and Jim, mm-hmm. like, di- at different points in my life. Oh, nice. I, and it's kind of funny, because when I can tell when I knew you, at what period in my life I knew uh-huh. you, by what name you call me. Oh, okay. If you <laughs> call funny. me Jim, you're probably high school and somewhat college area. Okay. And then if it's Jimmy, it was really childhood. And mm-hmm. if it was James, it was like in my 30s and later in life with like formal business name. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> I go by Jimmy on the with in social media okay. world. So yeah, we have uh, my my only nicknames are usually just because people mess up and forget my name and they call me Travis. <laughs> 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 so that works yeah otherwise Travis. i've just been tyler my whole life yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> no that's funny uh yeah so we are here at the recording studio and today since we're on camera yeah we have one camera over here for jimbo we have one camera here for both of us. We have one camera over here for me. So you guys over here get to see me picking my nose every once in a while. And whenever Jimmy is looking that way, I might give him a wet willy. So you guys might get to see that too. But yeah, since we're recording, that means today that you guys are listening to this, it is a Monday. It is a Monday. Okay, good. You got it right this time. <laughs> Yay! I'm figuring it out. I'm learning. Uh, so today's Monday. You guys get to hear this uh, on the podcast and you get to watch the video of it, which means if it's a Monday, that it is a main topic or campfire discussion today, mm-hmm. correct? Yep, exactly. So you're bef- finally getting it. I'm, f- I'm figuring it out. I'm a slow learner, but hey, give me time and I figure it out. Um, but before we get into today's campfire discussion, uh, we want to thank all of our lovely people out there that uh, give their hard-earned green money to us um, to support us and kind of as a donation so that we get to create better content for you. And, you know, the first investment that we've done with that is um, setting up uh, the uh, two episodes a week, um, and one of them is going to be on video every week as well. So, yeah. um, as you can see, it's all going right back to you guys, creating some awesome content as you get to listen to um, the secretary's dog in the background. So, <laughs> <laughs> the secretary is just off camera now, giving me dirty looks right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have our friends. I don't mean to interrupt because I know where you're we going. We have friends? We have our friends out on another podcast. Oh, I don't the, know if we want to talk about the wine, that. whiskey, and wheeling. <laughs> wheeling wine. No, wine that's wine. right. No, I thought sorry. you liked whiskey first. So you're, <laughs> no, I changed my mind. I you like, like wine. wine better today? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, they have their like producer in studio. Yes. Uh, Do you know about Arlo? their producer, um, Lorenzo? Lorenzo. Yes. I think Lorenzo is kind of like our assistant secretary. Kind of, but not really. Okay. Um, we'll have to. <laughs> I have to. We have to go over to their recording studio sometimes, so you can see and meet Lorenzo. Okay, he's pretty funny, especially he's kind of funny looking too. So, um, all right, yeah. we'll have good. to go over there sometime. I am kind of curious about Lorenzo. Okay, and yeah, he. So. Yeah, you'll see. We'll go over there. It's just kind of a, a running joke that ended up making its way onto <laughs> to their podcast. But <laughs> yeah, Lorenzo is a. He's a really cool. Um, uh, I don't know how to s- describe him. Producer. He's a very cool producer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, our, we have our secretary behind the scenes here uh, that answers all of our emails and and sometimes goes wheeling with us and sometimes tries to do her best to ignore us while she plays around on Instagram. So, mm-hmm. um, 
Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, that's a uh, that's kind of the behind the scenes of what's been going on here. Yeah. Yeah. And what's going to be moving forward? So, if you guys haven't heard yet on Video Land, YouTube Land over here, um, we're going to be doing two episodes a week on the podcast. One of them is going to be on video each time, and uh, one of them is going to be on only the podcast. But you should be able to to listen to both on the podcast. So, yes, we'll be releasing Monday mornings with. The campfire discussion, kind of the educational part of the podcast, which I know is not a lot of it, but um, we're hoping to um, educate as we go along on some certain off-roading, wheeling, camping, working on your rigs kind of stuff, how to build rigs for off-roading, that kind of stuff. So uh, those will be coming out on Mondays. And on Thursdays uh, will be the podcast release of what we were up to the previous weekend, um, since we tend to do at least one of us is off doing something every weekend. Um, sometimes we get both of us, and those end up to be really long episodes <laughs> when yes. both of us are off doing yes, stuff. They so do. uh, we ended up deciding to split it up into two episodes per week uh, so that it'll be kind of easier for you guys to get through the episodes, Mm -hmm. um, download them, listen to them, and kind of have them sectioned and structured, I think, a little bit better. And now we also won't have to worry about talking for two hours just on what we were doing the last weekend, (laughs) which we tend to do pretty often. And a lot of it gets cut before going out to you guys in podcast land and YouTube land. So... Um, should allow us to talk more and, and have a lot more fun and not have to worry about going over time limits or anything. And um, it's going to be a great addition, I think. So let us know what you guys think of it. Shoot us emails, shoot us uh, messages on Instagram, uh, YouTube, the web, the the web, the web book, the well, web you book can, is that yeah. what it is. You can go <laughs> onto the website and go to the um, um, podcast page and mm-hmm. write a comment down there. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So let us know what you guys think about it. Um, I think it's going to be pretty fun. So yeah, that's that. Uh, thank you for all your support out there because you guys, uh, we get to kind of move forward and do some really cool stuff. So mm-hmm. um, this month's giveaway is an exploration ready advanced. First aid kit. So, uh, it's a really cool, excuse me, really cool first aid kit that has a ton of stuff in it that is really designed and tailored for off-roaders and off-roading out in the wilderness. If something's going to happen, if you're going to get hurt, what is the most probable thing that you're going to get hurt by? Usually, it's your right seat passenger slapping you in the face because they get jostled around and they weren't holding on. Um, So, you end up with a broken nose. So, we have tampons or they have tampons in there just for that uh, situation. Those are, those I don't are think, I don't really know good, do. <laughs> <laughs> actually, though. <laughs> yeah. They are really good plug, uh, nose pluggers they if are. you break your nose or have a bleeding nose. But yeah, no, they have a bunch of other stuff in there. Check it out. We're going to put a link down in the show notes on the podcast. We'll put a link in the uh, YouTube description as yep. well, the video description. Uh, it's a really cool first aid kit. Value is 150 bucks, And you guys get it. Uh, you get a chance at getting it if you're signed up for the $10 giveaway tier on Patreon.com. So that is is patreon.com slash snail trail 4x4 so we have uh some other things some new goodies lined up for next month and we'll get into those uh the last week of august here before we do the drawing for august so i'm excited for them yeah me too uh it should be a really cool one it's something that everybody if you're an off-roader you could use these things so um We'll get into that the last uh, week of August. We're going to keep you guys on the edge of your seats in the meantime. <laughs> and um, the uh, I think that's about it. Yeah. So uh, go. Oh, if you wanted to get a first aid kit um, before the drawing or say you're one of the 25, 26 people that don't win the first aid kit and you want to get one, uh, you can go to explorationready.com. They will take an HSA or an FSA, health savings account or flex spending account from your work benefits. Mm -hmm. You can pay for your first aid kit using those, which is really freaking cool. I don't know of any other places yet you can really do that. So uh, check it out. You can use the discount code snailtrailpod. That's S-N-A-I-L-T-R-A-I-L-P-O-D and get 20% off. So not only do you get to use money that's stashed away that you may not ever get to use very often, but you get an extra 20% off to help that money go longer. So you can still keep it in case you break your ankle out on the trail still. So 
Um, like I know uh, somebody <laughs> stepped out of their rig and broke his ankle be- on flat ground, which was very interesting. We give him a hard time about it every time until <laughs> we see him still. Well, wasn't me. It was Dale. <laughs> Dale, we're looking Dale. at you out there. <laughs> um, Through the ether. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So yeah, check them out. They're a really cool local couple. They do some really neat stuff. And like I said, they've prioritized this whole first aid kit for what is most likely to happen on the trail, what you're most likely about to going to have issues with and to be able to help those issues safely and smartly <laughs> rather than using uh, clotting powder and stuff that you end up having to get cut out of your skin when you get to the ER. So, um, yeah, it's not fun. And I've heard of, of her telling me some interesting stories about that now. Mm-hmm. So, uh, quick clot is not your friend if you scraped your knee on a rock. Just FYI. So, um, yeah, we're going to move on now to the campfire discussion for this week. So, um Really cool event just happened, and uh, what was that event called, Jimmy? Sierra Trek. Sierra Trek. <laughs> so uh, this event has been going on for over fifty years now. I think they're on really? the fifty second. Wow, forty or is I it didn't forty know that. years? Because I believe um, has it always just been couple, at the same location? Um, for the most part, it hasn't always been at Meadow Lake Campground, but it's okay. always been on the Fordyce Trail. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so uh, Fordyce is a, a really difficult trail. It's probably the arguably the hardest trail in Northern California. And, um, you know, there's a reason why mm-hmm. the only named obstacles on the trail are uh, Windchill 1, Windchill 2, Windchill 3, Windchill 4. And any guess at what the last one's called, Jimmy? Uh, baby walks. Correct. No, it's a Winch Hill 5. <laughs> so, um, there's a reason why these are all called Winch Hills as the name of the obstacle. So, um, if you ever get a chance, go on to YouTube. Uh, Jimmy and I are going to have to do a drive through the, the trail sometime and show you guys what all the trail, what all the, the obstacles look like, yeah. all the Winch Hills look like. But check out Winch Hill 3 oh, on yeah. Fordyce. Just Google that. Um, and just say, hey, Google. Show, show me videos on Windchill 3. And hopefully, if your phone is like mine just did, <laughs> it'll <laughs> look up and show you videos on Windchill 3 <laughs> um, from me talking through your guys' device. So, yeah, check those out. Windchill 3 is really cool. Windchill 5 is relatively easy if you take the bypasses. Yeah. It's probably the easiest Windchill if you use the bypass. But if you don't use the bypass, it is it can be pretty interesting because there's a big hole in the bottom of the the middle of the top section, I guess. So that top section is the gnarly part. And if you end up, as you're trying to climb that top section, slip down into the hole, you're going to roll pretty much no matter what. It doesn't matter what you do. You're going to roll your rig. So that's wind chill mm-hmm. five. Wind chill one is, in my opinion, the second hardest uh, wind chill. It's just really? long. I think so. Do hmm. you think it's harder than four? I think it's... Harder than, uh, so number three is the hardest. I think so, yeah. Okay. Definitely. <laughs> I don't, uh, Winchell, f- I was going to say Winchell 5 might be harder. Then Winchell than one? 1? No. I don't if, know. It, if you it's, don't do the bypass. If Correct. If you don't do the bypass, that's, I don't know, because Winchell 1 has its own interesting aspect to it, right? Yeah. It's a... Uh, it's yeah, it's okay. not too bad. It is. It's just a long, bouldery climb that yeah. you have to maneuver your way through all these boulders, and then there's a big ledge, right? And in my opinion, the hardest part is after you come up over the ledge. Yeah. So with the pointed rock <laughs> in the, the middle, all the pointed rock in the middle, and the other yeah. rocks at the end. So yeah, okay. Um, right. that's the hard part. And if you you kill one, I think you can get through that just fine. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. Until then, I think it's a tie between five and four. Okay. If you if you don't take the bypasses, right? Um, I think there were a lot more people that had to winch at four just because there's not really a bypass. Mm-hmm. So I think four would win out just because there's not really a bypass for it. Okay. Um, and then five, and then two. Right. With two, in my opinion, being the easiest one. I agree. So. Uh, really fun hills, really fun obstacles. There's a, a couple of bonus obstacles that have popped up now throughout the years called Winchill uh, 0.5 0.5, and yeah. Winchill 3.5. 
Windchill 3.5 is getting really dug out now. Oh, I bet. <laughs> it's turning in pretty interesting of an obstacle. Sure. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's just a long, beautiful, gorgeous trail through a canyon. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's, it's a great event. So this, this whole event called Sierra Trek is built around the Fort Ice Trail. Yeah. And it was one of the, the, the first events that Cal Four Wheel ever did, California Four Wheel Drive Association. And, um, it's just, it's been a huge event in his, in history and the historical aspect of California four wheel drive. Okay. And, uh, they used to get upwards of 2000 people. Really? 2000 people at these, uh, at Sierra Trek. They Holy used to, cow. Yeah. It used to be massive. And this year, I think the trail we trail must have been easier. Uh, the trail was a lot easier. That was, that was <laughs> right? like pre 2000. I want to say right around 2007, eight, nine, somewhere on there. Oh, wow. The trail okay. started shooting up in difficulty. Uh, so it, this was back in like early 2000s. That's probably from, right around the time the, and the one and only time that I've made it up when chill three without <laughs> winching <laughs> yeah. and not doing the bypass. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been become a pretty interesting trail for mm-hmm. sure. So uh, this event has been been going on. I'm pretty sure it was 50 years because I want to say they had the 50th year anniversary either last year or the year before. That's crazy. I didn't so know it was that old. I think this year was the 52nd annual Sierra Trek. Wow. Um, Good for them. Yeah. So, it's been going on for a while. It's a really cool event. They supply... Uh, there's a massive raffle that uh, my club does, the Mad Hatters. So, mm-hmm. go Mad Hatters. Everybody out there doing a great job with the raffle. They supply breakfast on thursday sorry they do not supply breakfast thursday morning but there's a trail run thursday morning if you're on the full trail run that goes from eagle lakes all the way to meadow lakes uh they supply donuts and coffee and danishes stuff like that for the trail crew for the people running the trail ah got it um so there's no breakfast in camp um, but there is dinner thursday night breakfast friday dinner's friday breakfast saturday dinner saturday and breakfast sunday so, you get six meals out of uh, going here. There's hot showers. There's a bar. Wow. There's a, a swag there's a booth. big bar. There's a big bar. And there's a big snack bar as well. So, yeah. <laughs> there's both. Uh, there's um, the raffle. There's a big dance floor. The giant concrete pad that they, they turn into a dance floor. A DJ. They used to do live bands all the time. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, but apparently bands don't like doing gigs out there because it's a pain in the ass to get all of their uh, equipment out to Meadow Lake and oh, jostling it around on Meadow Lake Road as you're getting out there. So oh, I bet. it's become harder and harder to find bands. So they actually have switched over to a DJ, which yeah, worked out really make, well. That makes sense. Um, yeah. You get a more variety of music and entertainment and, and dancing opportunities yeah. with and the all DJ. you got to do is plug in your phone exactly so <laughs> it's just somebody with their their phone on these giant speakers no he has a really cool setup he had lights there's a full stage for him and everything he did a really wow. good job so there's all that there's a giant bonfire pit yeah. with a couple of other pits nearby the uh, metal cloak built uh, out of metal and um yeah it's a really fun time so it goes from thursday through sunday so thursday friday saturday and then sunday is really more the cleanup day right so clean up head home clean up head home day kind of thing so on thursday they did a full river run or full river they did a full run full trail run yeah from from eagle lakes all the way up to meadow lakes okay can i pause you for a second so did they Mm -hmm. did pg and e lower the flow rate of the river because there are river crossings (laughs) on the fort ice trail Uh and um if you're not familiar with it and Mm -hmm. this whole entire summer the flow rates have been somewhere around 300 cfm cubic feet per Per second cubic cfs cfs is cubic feet per feet second cfs yeah C- yeah see it okay sorry cfs uh-huh. cubic feet per second mm-hmm. and so it's darn near impossible to cross that river yeah people are doing it which is crazy people are doing it and they're hydrolocking their engines and blowing out their ecus yeah <laughs> i think we've we've had a few engine and ecus so far they're, this year they're trying to get across but yeah. so um, P- it's a reservoir. Ford Ice Lake is a reservoir and PG&E, um, Pacific Gas and Electric controls the flow rate uh-huh. of the, um, river. So did they lower it? They did. So every okay. year PG&E and Cal 4 has an agreement for the week of Sierra Trek. Uh, they drop the flows to like 
35 to 50 CFS, something okay. like that. So it makes it very, very oh, passable yeah, at that, at that easier. level. It's like halfway up your tires. Usually they drop it for the week of Sierra Trek, which makes things nice and easy. And they they have agreed to continue doing that. Um, because we have a good relationship with them. Um, even in the upcoming years here where they're talking about shutting down committee uh, and Fordyce Lake. So, right. um, yeah, so the, that was the river crossings are there. They're fun. They're great at low flows. Uh, they're fun to go across. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of campsites, camping areas along the trail. But, you know, when you have all the, the main camp support at Meadow Lake, it's best to just kind of go up and hang out at Meadow Camp at Meadow Lake with everybody. Uh, it's a it's a really neat way to run the trail because there are crews that volunteer and help out with all of the wind chills throughout the the Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So there's a wind chill one crew, two, three, four, five. That if you come up on the wind chill, they will get you through that obstacle. Uh, they may tell you that eventually you have to go down and go take the bypass, but you will get through the obstacle. Um, the only thing that's kind of different about Sierra Trek versus, say, like Jeepers Jamboree or Jeep Jamboree or something is that uh, they will not repair your vehicle on trail. It's okay. not up. To, it's not like they hire mechanics and, and go up and down the trail with mechanics, kind of like Jeepers Jamboree does. Yeah. Um, so if you break your rig on the trail, we will get you personally and the people off the trail and back to safety. Um, but it's ultimately up to you to get your rig off of the trail. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, um, keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. So, um, yeah. So, all the wind chills have crews at them, volunteers. Wind chills one, two, and three pretty much camp out at their wind chill for thir- the whole week kind of thing and hang out and have a good time, do their own thing. Oh, wow. Okay. Wind chills four and five usually go back into camp and partake in all the festivities at camp. So, they get all the meals. You get access to the hot showers. Um, mm-hmm. You get to hang out with people, be in the raffle, dancing, have drinks, have a good time. So... This year, I signed up to do the help with the communication. So, we set up a couple of repeaters for Sierra Trek. Yeah. We which talked was, about that a little bit. Which we last. talked a little bit on the previous episode here. Uh, so, that was cool. That was really neat. The The one we set up in camp didn't work too well uh, to cover the trail. We covered the camp great, <laughs> but yeah. um, so does Simplex. So, you don't need a repeater to cover in camp. But uh, the Signal Peak repeater worked awesome, at least... For me, and I had a guy who came up to me uh, at some point during the event and was like, this is the worst we've ever had for radio communications at Sierra Trek. We've never had it as bad before. And I kind of looked at him and I was like, it's working great for me. I don't know what you're talking about. Was he on the wrong channel? (laughs) He he was like two hertz (laughs) off or something? Kind of. (laughs) Um so he had his own personal radio with him. And he goes, I can't talk to any of my guys. We can't hit. I can't use the repeater. I've been trying all day. And he was the guy leading the run on Friday. Oh, yeah. Uh, the full trail run on Friday. <clears throat> and I said, well, have you guys been using Simplex to talk to each other? He goes, no, we're using the repeater as it should be. And I was like, well, if you're on the trail and you're within a mile to two miles of each other, use Simplex. Right. That's what it's there for. That's what the design for Simplex. Purpose. Yeah. Um, and that's what we... we wrote out in the little communications, you know, how do you use the communications at Sierra Trek? Trail crew should be on the Simplex channel. Anyways, so he's complaining about that and he goes, I can't hit the repeater from my radio. And so I had my little handheld with me and I keyed it up and hit the repeater just fine. And I said, back to base camp. And I said, hey, can you guys give me a signal report? And they're all, you're coming in loud and clear from the top of Windchill 5. And I was like, okay, cool. Thanks. He tried it and nobody responded. <laughs> so I was like, I was Did like, he have like the wrong PL code? He had the wrong... He didn't have an offset oh. set for the repeater. So, I was like, here, <laughs> give me... I was like, I don't know. My radio is working great. My Both my handheld and my truck. Yeah. Um, I, d- I, I don't want to say it's your radio or it's your programming, but I'm pretty sure it's your radio or your programming. <laughs> and he he kind of was like, no, I programmed this myself. I did it all correctly according to the information you guys gave me for everything. And I was like... Okay, look, if you don't want to listen, I'm more than willing to help you get your radio programmed. And and eventually, I was like, here, just let me look at your radio. Let me, maybe, maybe it isn't your radio, but let's at least check that off the list. Yeah. So, I grabbed it, went through the menu settings, and I was like, I kind of looked at him, and I was like, huh, okay. So, I changed and put an offset in there because there was no offset frequency for the 5 megahertz offset for a repeater access. So, I put that in there. 
keyed it up and immediately got the repeater and asked for a signal report and somebody answered, oh, yeah, you're coming in great. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I don't know. Um, I agree the repeater did not reach down into the trail quite as well as we thought it was what'd going you, to. What did you tell him? You're like, you know what? I just turned the volume I up. Just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I just told him, hey, you, there was no offset yeah. set in it and here you go. It's working now. Um, but I, I agree from in down in the trail, the repeater was not working as well um, as mm-hmm. we had planned on, but that's because this, we didn't have chance to go and set check all the signal propagations because pg e would not drop the flows before Sierra Trek. Got it. So we couldn't get down in the canyon and check everything. So it wasn't exactly as good as you we thought it was going to be. drove all the way backwards through, through the, the <laughs> down wind chill five, down wind chill four, down wind chill, chill track. Yeah, three, <laughs> just to get oh, down man. to the backside of committee. Oh, yeah. Where you can't really cross uh-huh. just to check it. Yeah. That or brought, drive down committee and bring your swimsuit. Yeah. Like, whatever. <laughs> so, anyway. Hand over, yeah. radio overhead as you're yeah. trying to get across the river. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, so that was uh, the communications. Uh, they worked great for me. Um, I know that they weren't working, working that great for some other people. Um, and all I have to say about that is if you want good, reliable communications, you're going to need to spend a little bit of money on your radios and not spend a skimp on your radios when you're spending multiple multiple thousands of dollars on your off-roading rigs. So, <laughs> if you're spending poke, 10, poke. 15, 20 thousand dollars on your off-roading rigs, you can afford five hundred dollars for a reliable radio that will give you awesome communications. Mm-hmm. So, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> and, All right. <laughs> uh, the communications uh, otherwise went very well, um, especially once we got base camp set up with a little bit better antenna, and um, eh, we had no issues. We were able to to keep track of everybody on the trail. We kept track of all the breakdowns. We had a few rollovers throughout the weekend. And um, we were able to keep track of everybody. And we got everybody off safely. We knew where everybody was at all times. So cool. I thought that was a big win. So, nice. So staying on the repeaters for a second, is this the okay. first time that you've set up for a Sierra Trek? The first time I personally have set up uh, for Sierra Trek, yes. Okay. Uh, but um, like, does your, does, is there, are you in like a ham organization that helps set up for this constantly or does it, you're nope. the Mad Hatters do it all the time nope. or? No, nope. it was no. just me. Uh, we have a, uh, there's a communications committee mm-hmm. that sets up for Sierra Trek and okay. I decided to join it this year because of some of the implications that happened last year when there yeah. was a, a unfortunate death yeah. during Sierra Trek. A fatality, yeah. And the, re- the repeater lost power. <laughs> during that time oh, no. of the death. And so there was zero communication. So I don't know what this guy was talking about saying that this year was the worst he's ever seen it when there was zero communications yeah. last year. Um, but anyways, because of that, I was like, Hey, I found a track down the guy that did set up all the communications. And I was like, Hey, how are you doing it last year? Hey, okay, cool. I have some ideas on how we can improve mm-hmm. on the communication system, which then ended up roping me into being on the committee and going through and setting up a lot of this stuff. So, cool. And uh, due to you setting it up this year, now mm-hmm. you have a an idea of how to improve it again for next year. Yep. I have my notes. Yeah. I took some notes throughout the weekend on, mm-hmm. on things I think we can do to... To make right. it a little bit better and, and make the communications more reliable down in the trail. Um, so, yeah, I have a few ideas. So, we'll see how that rolls out. Sweet. Uh, so, yeah, we did that. And then along with my communications duties, I was also um, the head organizer for Winch Hill 5. Okay. And um, what does that mean? So, that means we get to hang out on Winch Hill 5. I had to get together, gather volunteers mm-hmm. and to go hang out on Winch Hill 5. And we put together a game that people could play as okay. on their way through. It was a little like toss as they're game. driving through? Uh-huh. Oh, and you okay. had to, it was, uh, I got a uh, cut up and made a little throw board that looks like a cornhole board with six holes in it. Yeah. And um, I made that in maybe like 20 minutes. It's pretty funny because I took a jigsaw and just went, to create and cut the holes <laughs> out. So they're all lopsided and cut all weird. Um, so I did that. I made the board and then bought these like little dog toys. Um here, ad lib real quick. Ask me another question that we can go to and I'll show you a, a dog toy. You know what would have been really funny though is I know what the dog toys look like, but if you would have done like a um, gingerbread sort of cutout of the dog toys and they would have had like 
sort of perfectly <laughs> make it into the yeah into or yeah. Some, you know or have it be four times the size of the dog toy oh yeah so that you have like an elephant and uh-huh. you kind of outline the shape of an elephant and make yeah. it bigger or the monkey you know and it's like a little <laughs> sketch of the monkey i think that would have been hilarious that would have been pretty good so we have these they're literally dog toys there's a little squeaker in the monkey and the pig and the elephant so they're really dirty as you may may or may not be able to, there's the pig. That used to be a pink color. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, they're really dirty because people would, uh, they were, a lot of people were missing. I was surprised. Right. They're, well, they were thrown in and hidden in the dirt, right? Yeah. And so, that's why So, they would dirty. fall in the dirt. Yeah. But, um, yeah, people would come up after they did the windshield. <laughs> they had it set up on the side of my Forerunner standing up and leaning up against the tire. And we'd tell them, hey, you want to toss... Uh, do a toss and win a prize. Yeah. And the prizes we had were uh, some gift certificates to Metal Cloak. Mm-hmm. So, huge shout out to Matson for supplying those. That was really cool. Um, we had uh, gift certificates to Freedom Ropes. So, cool. huge shout out to Leah Hensley down with Freedom Ropes. And they're the local company uh, here in California. They're located in Pismo. And mm-hmm. they are, if you ever see somebody yanking somebody out of the dunes in Pismo... It's probably one of the Freedom Ropes people. Yeah. Um, jerk they, pirates. The jerk pirates, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they have a, a really cool uh, recovery kinetic rope. And yeah. so, they got some gift certificates for those. I did a bunch of gift certificates for more flights. Mm-hmm. Um, some free online ham radio classes for my offered radio. I did a more flight itself. Whoa. And I did four uh, digital gauges. Oh, Morflate cool. More digital gauges. So... Um, it was really cool, but it was I was amazed at how many people were missing because they would drive up, yeah, and get one of these or three of them. They had three chances to make one of them, and they would miss from like two or three feet away. What? <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, it was a little windy the first day. Okay. Um, we only get, ended up giving out like four or five prizes the first day out of everybody, and there was 30, 35 rigs on the full trail run, forty rigs, something like that. Dang. Okay. So, so when they did make it, uh-huh. how did you or them choose what <laughs> gift to give them? Uh, I just told the the girl that was kind of running the toss game. I said, choose a random gift and give it to them. Oh, yeah. So, she just so, had a folder with all the gift certificates in it and then the prizes in a bin. And she just said, it. here you go. <laughs> so, who or how or do you know the person that got the full more flight? I don't actually because okay. I was going to save that and give it to... Um, the couple that was helping me, James and Rhonda, uh, but uh, mainly because James is uh, trading me a 14 bolt yeah, um, for a Morflate. So, I was just going to give it to them because they also came out and helped me out with everything because a lot of people backed out last minute <laughs> yeah. to help me on Windchill 5. And um, Originally, I wasn't planning on doing both the communications and Windchill 5, but um, due to lack of people... Uh, we ended up doing both and they came out and helped and uh, I was very, very grateful for their help as well as Jeff, uh, John, Glenn, Jim, and James and Rhonda. So, uh, you guys were literally lifesavers. Thanks for coming out and having a good time. Um, so yeah, I don't, I could, yeah, I okay. don't know who got the more flight. <laughs> oh, okay. He, they could have just taken it and hidden it in the Suzuki. They have yeah. a really nice samurai. They may have just, because they were mentioning that they really wanted it. They were. <laughs> and I told him if it was still left afterwards, if nobody got the prize that um, they could have it. So, they may and have so, just taken it and shoved so it in the So, you really somewhere. weren't, your plan was just not to hand it out and be like, huh, nobody uh, got yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> yep. I was going to do that, but I guess they were, they're, they're a really nice couple. I don't, I have a feeling they just gave it out as a prize. So Yeah, probably. Um, but anyway, so it was a really good time. The game worked out well. So were they, mm-hmm. did they have to be in the rig to throw it? Or? They did have to be okay. in the rig still. And it was only the driver that got to throw. Okay. Which means so, the driver, in order to kind of get a good throw, he had to really throw left-handed. Right. That's what I was going to say. Or reach across their body and kind of get jammed in their door frame trying to throw right-handed. Yeah. <laughs> so. Unless you're like Bobcat and you don't have any doors, then you got like <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> a yeah. window. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so that was fun. Windchill 5 went really smooth. We had one rollover on Thursday. Okay. So, there was, uh, there's, you know, the there's a middle section to Windchill 5 and the bypass kind of S's through the entire windchill. Yes. And we taped off the middle section uh, because we didn't want people going up there and rolling and causing a, a shutdown of the hill while we're trying to get 50 other rigs through. Okay. And so, we taped off the bottom section and this really awesome built uh, green 
Jeep thing. I don't even know. It wasn't even really a Jeep anymore at that point. But it was on like 49s, 49-inch tires, okay. uh, double triangulated four-link coilovers, everything. And he came through, and I kind of pointed at him because I was at the top of the hill spotting people through. And I said, hey, do you want to come up here? And he kind of looked, and he goes, gave me a thumbs up. And I'm like, okay, cool. So he starts coming through, and he walked up it without too many issues at all. And then his buddy right behind him stopped at the center line, the center entrance, and kind of pointed that, you know, he wanted to come up that way. And I kind of looked at him and I pointed around. I was like, go take the bypass. We need to keep things moving. Um, I said, you should take the bypass. And he goes, no, I want to go there. So, yeah, I kind of, of like, I get it. It's, you know, you paid a lot to be on this run and this event. And the whole, our goal as the windshield crew is to, you know, help you have a good time. Yeah, keep but, the trail moving. Yeah, keep the trail moving. Um, but help people have a good time. Sure. So, there wasn't anybody behind him. Uh, he was kind of the the last person in that little group that had made it through Winchell 5. And I kind of took a second. I looked under his rig. He had a really built uh, Dana 44 in the front that was trussed and, and, and really built up nicely. And he had a 14 bolt in the rear. And so I was like, okay, he was on 40s or 42s. All right. So I was like, okay, he could probably do it. His rig is capable of it. He had yeah. a roll cage. So I was like, okay, it was a black TJ. And so I was like, kind of like, I was like, uh, I still think you should take the bypass. And he goes, can I, can I just come here? And I was like, okay, fine. You want to come here? Come on up. So I held up the tape for him as he drove under and he made it up the first little section just fine. And then he started going up the second section and he was doing pretty well, gave it a few attempts at it. And um, right at this time, one of the trail crew mm-hmm. had had been in, through in front of him and the trail crew had stopped to hang out at Winchell 5 for a while. Okay. And so, he started spotting and giving directions while I was trying to spot and give directions. Oh. And it yeah. kind of got to the point where then more people started chiming in and more people started chiming in. And pretty soon, we had about five or six people um, spotting and giving directions. And so I was like, if I start giving directions, it's just with him as well. It's just going to become chaos. And I know how frustrating that gets as a driver. It's so annoying. So I was like, I'm just not going to be a problem. I'm going to step back. And if something really goes wrong, then I'll step in and take over. And so I'm kind of stepped back and they're talking and talking. And no, you do it. Just then it gets to the point where you're on the right line. Just bump it. Bump it harder. Bump it harder. You need to go harder. And I'm kind of sitting here. I'm like, nah, I think you're, I think you're about done. Um, let's come on down. You've had enough attempts at this. Yeah. Let's come on back you down and you can finish the rest up the bypass. And so as I'm saying this, somebody goes, no, you did, you're right there. Now just back up a foot and then bump it. And he backs up a foot and slid into that hole that we were talking about earlier on Mitchell oh, five. Yeah. <laughs> and he slid into the hole. And when he did, he just slowly rolled over and flopped it sideways on the driver's side. Oh, so boy. it wasn't like a big roll. It wasn't dramatic or anything. He just went, neek. And then just stayed there on the driver's side. Right. Um, and so, we told him to shut off the engine. He got the engine shut off. And uh, I said, are you guys okay? They seemed fine. They weren't panicked at all. The passenger was kind of laughing a little bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that is all point, passengers should exactly, at that point right? in time. <laughs> they had a four-point harness. So, that everything was safe. And um, I told him, uh, we picked up a couple of things that fell out. Nothing big. He didn't, it wasn't a yard sale or anything. He packed his rig really well. And, um, but turns out he, I don't think he had really owned his rig or built it or had it for that long. Okay. Uh, He bought it probably or something. I think he bought it and, uh, he was not as experienced because as he was trying up those lines, you could tell he was getting really flustered. Yeah. Um, and you know, as, uh, just being new to off-roading and rock crawling, if you try a line, then try another one, try another one, it's not working. Instead of kind of keeping your cool and realizing that's what happens sometimes when you're off-roading. Yeah. Um, he was starting to get really frustrated, frustrated, really flustered, really anxious. Mm-hmm. I don't think the crowd was helping very much with that. But no. anyway, so we got the passenger out of the vehicle and he stayed in it. He said he was fine. Um, and I was like, look, you can get out or you can stay in. If you stay in, then we know that we have complete control of the vehicle when we roll it back over. We know you're safe. Yeah. Your roll cage is doing its job. Your seatbelts are doing their job. Um, and so, we had him stay in it. Okay. And um, we ended up having to... We hooked a winch to up and over 
Um, the cage, the, and the cage, body. and the body. So and it started so rolling him. Flopped over it driver's side. He flopped it driver's side. You okay. So then on did you the downhill slope yeah. of the hill? So then did you wrap? You wrapped it over his truck, mm-hmm. over the passenger side, and down to the driver's side to pull him up. No, actually, the, we started out on this guy. We only put it on his slider because his roll cage was underneath his uh, top. Oh, yeah, okay. the soft top on, so we couldn't get it around and over that. Sure. So he put on his slider to begin with, mm-hmm. and um, and then we decided to put a winch line on his front bumper just so that once we do roll him back over on the hill, yeah, he doesn't go sliding he down the hill roll or roll backwards. backwards. Sure. So keep complete control of the rollover. Makes sense. Yeah. And so we started rolling him over, <clears throat> and uh, we flopped him back over onto all four wheels. And um, had him sit there for a little bit and just kind of kept the winch lines on him to mm-hmm. keep control so that he wouldn't go anywhere. And then uh, started picking up his stuff and handing it back to him and letting him put it back in the rig. And so, also, while we're the, the whole point of letting it sit there is so that let the oil yeah, yeah, drain down exactly. to the bottom of the engine again. So, yeah. um, we're letting it sit there. And so I said, okay, it's been about five, 10 minutes or so. And I said, okay, go ahead and bump your starter. Just give it a little, see if it goes. Be gentle on it. And so, he bumps it and we just hear this crank <laughs> noise. Oh. And I was like, uh-oh, that's not good. <laughs> yeah. So, he had hydro-locked his engine from the oil. And we we're like, I really hope that wasn't a piston rod breaking or bending or hitting something. Ooh. And okay. so, I was like, okay, we're done. We're not going to try and start the engine anymore. We're going to dead pull you up the rest of the way here, up this hill face, and then pull you out to the clearing. And we'll have some people... Uh, take apart all your spark plugs and and start and checking your engine and everything. So he goes, yeah. okay. So he stayed in the rig the whole time so that we could still have steering and, and, and at least a little braking. bit of braking. Yeah. And uh, so what we ended up doing, we had one rig pulling and it wasn't enough to pull him up the hill. Losing a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. Let's Welcome try that. back, everybody. <laughs> um. So yeah. So we it it would was uh, too difficult for one rig and one winch to pull him uphill. Sure. So, we ended up hooking up my winch and uh, somebody else's winch and we kept um, hold of his side mm-hmm. so he didn't flop, flop back over with the third winch. Oh, wow. So, we had three winches going and the main winch that we started on to pull him up the hill, we put on a snatch block back to another vehicle. So, it had a two to one pull. Wow. Okay. My winch had a straight one-to-one pull, and then the other winch off the side was just keeping him from rolling over. Yeah, it wasn't really pulling at yeah. all. Yeah. So, uh, we got him up, and we got him up to a certain point where his front driver tire got stuffed underneath a ledge, and it was like a kind of a pullover, and it wasn't coming up over the ledge. Okay. So, we repositioned the side winch to his front bumper and just pulled the whole front end of the rig two feet over (laughs) using the winch. (laughs) And then he was home free. We got him up to the top and um, got him to level ground. And back on the line that he should have been on. Back on the line he should have been up, but at the top over everything. And then we had his buddy, the green rig, uh, turned around. We were using his winch to begin with, the one that wasn't quite enough. Yeah. Had him turn around, put him on a short strap, and pulled him up out of the way. And um, off to uh, to start pulling his engine apart, pulling plugs and crank it over to clear the oil out of the cylinders and everything. So, right. So yeah, that was the first rollover. <laughs> yeah, and that took about two hours maybe to clear, just because yeah. of the different. We got up to certain points and then came across an issue and had to add winches and remove rigging around. Yeah. And and so at that point, was there a long line of people waiting? At that point, there had started to become a long line of people waiting. Yeah. So. We cleared him out and the rest of the people started coming up just fine. And um, the rest of the day, we had no issues. Um, we made okay. everybody take the nice. bypass. We didn't let anybody else come up the center line. <laughs> um, so, it was a, the rest of the day was fine. It was a relatively short day. The trail crew that day did a really good job at getting people through the trail. Uh, all the windchills did their job at getting people through the trail. You know, sometimes you hear nightmare stories um, like the next day of people <laughs> coming in really, really late at night and the windchill five not getting off of the windchill until super late at night just because you have to wait until everyone comes through. Right. I think everybody, we were back in camp with three hours of daylight still. <clears throat> on which, on Thursday. Thursday, okay. Which is incredible. Yeah. Uh, Friday then came around and Friday is a little bit bigger day. They do a full trail and a river run on Friday. And what's the river run? The river run is uh, goes from Meadow Lake down to Committee. 
and back. And back. Got it. So they go down to committee, have lunch, hang out for a little bit, and then come back up. The full trail was going on, and that had 42 rigs on it. 52 if you include the trail crew. Yeah. And then the river run had, on Friday, I want to say 25 rigs, 24 rigs on it, something like that. Wow. So, um, there was a lot of There's rigs on the trail 70 on something Friday, um, just in participants. Yeah. Um, that was fun. Friday was interesting day because we had two rollovers on Winchell 5. <laughs> oh, geez. Same spot, same problem. <laughs> exact same. same spot, exact same problem. So, this guy, we told him uh, that if he, he had a built enough rig that if he wanted to, our bottom the guy at the bottom of the hill spotting Jeff. He told him, you know, hey, go up and just pull up to the yellow caution tape. And if Tyler wants to let you through, he'll let you through. And so he pulls up to the yellow caution tape. And I'm like, there's 20 rigs behind this guy. I'm not going to chance it. And I so I told him, nope, go around the bypass. And he kind of looks at me and then guns it through the caution tape and breaks the caution tape across his windshield and starts gunning it up the first, that the, the middle section there in the center line. And so I start yelling at him because I had a rig. I had started calling to come across the bypass, which gets, cuts right across that center line. Yeah. Um, I'm yelling at him to stop and stop. And so he stops in the middle of the, the center section after, you know, revving up his spinning out, trying to come up. And I go over to him and I was like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah. I said, are you aware that you're about to hit this guy and I told you to stop and go around the other way? He goes, why can't I come through here? And I was like, because we're trying to keep the trail running. If for some reason you do roll, we have to shut down the windshield for an hour, hour and a half, mm-hmm. um, right. which just, it puts a huge length of time on everybody else's day. Right. And we're just trying to get people through. And he goes, he goes, come on, don't you want a show for everybody up here? Because there's a windshield five, you always get crowds there. And I was like, I mean, yes, it's always fun for the crowds. However, I yeah. also have to keep the trail moving. Yeah. If there was nobody behind you, if you want to wait until all the 20 rigs behind you clear out and then do it, we can do that. Yeah, right. But um, if you don't, then you need to go around the bypass. And he kind of looked at me and he goes, fine. I was like, okay. I said, fine. If you want to go at it, you can finish up this hill here and then go around the bypass, take the corner, and take, continue on the bypass. It was fine, kind of with this attitude. Sure. I said, okay, wait here. Let me get this other guy through. So, I literally turn around to start walking up the section to go and start spotting the other guy through, and he guns it again. Again. And so, I turn around. I just start yelling and cursing at him. Yeah. I'm like, what the F are you doing? I told you to stop. Hey, what are you doing? So, he stops at the top of that center section, and he goes... He just has this pissed off look on his face. I'm like, right. what are you doing? You're going to kill somebody. Yeah. And so, finally, I get him to stop and I tell the other rig to come through and he comes through as soon as the guy clears his bumper. Yeah. The guy takes off again. Oh, my god! Up the hill. And so, I'm just telling the guy in the white Jeep that I was bringing through, I was like, hey, hey, come on through. Just get clear. Get out of the way at this point because he's not listening to anything. Right. So, this guy, he guns it. From the top of the center section, <laughs> hits the front of the hill. His front suspension unloads. Yeah. And he comes down in the hole and does an endo over backwards onto his passenger side. <laughs> like all in one swift movement. And I was oh like... Oh, my gosh. I just kind of looked at him and he, he kind of looks up at me from inside the cab because I was standing right there. And he goes... Uh, um, do you want me to get out? Do I need to turn off my engine? I was like, yes, turn off your engine. Now, was that fun? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's looking at me. So, that ended up taking oh. an hour to clear. Uh, hour and a half, sorry, to clear. And the way we ended up having to do it, because we had to roll him back over his driver's side, because he was on his passenger side, right? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but in order to do that, he fell, you know, perpendicular to the windshield. Oh, right. Perpendicular to the windshield here. So, he's perpendicular from the way that you need to be going. Exactly. So, if we right. roll him over, he's technically pointed in the semi-right direction for the bypass exit. Yeah. But if we, there's no way to get him stabilized because the he would roll over hole. on the hole and yeah. the, the windshield and everything right there. So, if, if we, even if we roll him over, he can't get back in his rig because he... So, he crawled out of his rig and his seatbelt has stayed locked up once we got him rolled back over. Uh-huh. He goes, I can get in. I, I'll be okay. And I was like, no, I'm not going to let you get in a rig well, that... You can't when we put can't, your seatbelt on. You can't put your seatbelt on. And it's going to... Yeah. Yeah. No. And I was like, and if we lose control of it, you're going right back over. And with your seatbelt on, that's not good. <laughs> right. Like he couldn't get that concept through his head because he kept asking it over and over and over again. And so, anyways, so what we ended up doing because we couldn't get him back in the rig to steer it, 
We ended up getting him rolled over and held him there. Uh, big shout out to Corey from Genrite, a really cool dude. Uh, he pulled his Jeep down and helped do that. And so we got him pulled over and held there. And then we hooked up a winch on his front end and his rear end. Yeah. And then pulled the truck, uh, his rig backwards by keeping complete control of everything. Um, yeah. And so I was operating three winches at one, not operating them. I was, I was, Coordinating, coordinating three wrenches at one time to get him pulled off of the hill uh, backwards and then keeping control of the winch on top. And we found that if we loosened up the winch on... Or I found that if I told the guy, Corey, at top to loosen the winch um, as he was coming down, that the front end would turn and it would slide downhill. Okay. So yeah. I was like, okay, we can do that really slowly as I'm having him back, as right. I'm backing up the rig. And we finally got it back to flat ground and sat there. And the dude was super apologetic about everything. And um, you could tell he was he was not happy about it all. Yeah. Um, and Embarrassed. Embarrassed. He, yeah. was, he looked embarrassed about it all. Uh, but we got his rig back up. It took an hour and a half. So everything was shut down for an hour and a half. And... Um, I had to announce to the trail crew to tell everybody that coming up on Windchill 5, just hang out. It's going to be a while. And yeah. so we had a big a group of people at the bottom of Windchill 5 that were all running the trail, hanging right. out, watching all this happen. We yeah. had a big crowd up at top. So that was I, that was fun. I love doing vehicle recoveries. <laughs> well, yeah, and it I was knew that. it was <laughs> so it was wait, really cool. I want to understand this winching scenario a little okay. bit more. So you had one winch up at the top. Corey, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with coming down probably onto the guy's... Perpendicular, almost so, at a perpendicular 90. So, that was coming down onto his, like, rock slider? Um, and we put it on his cage this time. The cage? Yeah, so it was on his cage. Okay. And on then the pass- you had a vehicle on on each side of him, mm-hmm. which was... Well, each side of the trail, which was bumper, and front bumper and rear bumper, uh-huh. uh, in an essence. Uh-huh. And you had cables to them. Mm-hmm. And so, what you were doing was you were telling the one that was pulling the vehicle down the hill to pull and the other two to loosen. Yes. Okay. And then yeah. you were coordinating who to loosen, when, and, and, how, much and, to loosen. and how much to loosen to start swinging the rig and, and one, in an essence, twist the rig... <laughs> down the hill <laughs> kind of we didn't have, we didn't get him twisted back downhill we just we kept him in the bypass lane okay so um but he was when he we when we got him upright he was still at about a 45 degree angle to the uphill the the straight yeah. through center line the the hard line mm-hmm. and the bypass line so the bar hard line the bypass line make a 90 degree intersection with each other and so he was about a 45 degree to both of those got it when we got him rolled back over so okay. we found out that his front end ended up on the uphill side of the bypass. Yeah. So, as we rolled him over, um, yeah. he, his front end was higher on the hill than his rear end. Right. So, we were able to figure... I was able to figure out that if, as I loosened the two winches on the front and the side, his front end would slide down the hill a little bit. So, coordinating doing that, having it slide down as I was telling the other guy to coordinate and loop back and oh, backwards. Yeah. Um, it was it was very interesting. I've never done that before. <laughs> wow, yeah. that's cool. But no addition, like snatch box or no anything snatch else box in that in that scenario. Okay, yeah, just the coordination of the three winches and those guys did awesome. And were the, you the doing that communication through radio or vocal? Um, the hand signals. Oh yeah, yeah. So it was literally I was taking them and I was taking and I was going this way. Yeah. Every time I wanted him to move that way, the the two winches front and rear. Right. So you're just pointing in a direction. Pointing in a direction and for then both vehicles. For with both vehicles. One one hand per vehicle uh-huh. in essence. And then the uh, rig that had kept him from rolling or that rolled him back over Corey. Yeah. Um, I would come point back and do this. I'd either point in or point towards him. So I'd point to towards loosen the vehicle, or to tighten. loosen or tighten. Yeah. Okay. And he got that figured out really quick and he was pretty good about keeping on it. He's very experienced wheeler, very experienced with mm-hmm, recoveries mm-hmm. and winching. So yeah, it all went completely smooth. We didn't have any given moment where we did not have complete control of the vehicle. That's cool. Which is what you want in recoveries. And it was, it was just really cool to see it play out like that yeah. and have it work exactly how I was wanting it to work. <laughs> and where were you standing at that point? I was standing up off to the side um, in between the Jeep that we're pulling the the righted vehicle towards and the Corey's Jeep up top. Okay. So, I was kind of standing way off to the side. So, I wasn't in line with either of the ropes. And if either of them broke, I shouldn't have been hit. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But there was a couple times where we had to move one of the winch lines around. I think it was Corey's. We had to move it at one point. So I had to like get in the way of some of the lines and everything. Sure. But And were they all steel? Two of them were. I think Jeff's and Corey's were steel. And then the other guy who was a participant in the run yeah. was a, a rope uh, a synthetic. synthetic. Cool. Yeah. So uh, we had that. That was an interesting one. And I reported him back to base camp and said, hey, this guy's being a dick. He's, he's a not listening head. to participation. To, he's not listening to recommendations. He's not listening to Windchill crew. He's a super hot head. You know, he feels really bad about it now. <laughs> but um, he yeah. needs some kind of restrictions put on him for Sierra Trek. Yeah. Uh, if he can't follow instructions. So um, that, was the, that was that rollover there on Thursday. The first, How do you Friday. identify people? They have a Do participant they? number okay. tag. Okay. So every person, when you register and go on a yeah, run, yeah, they give curious. you a number, a yeah. registration ID. So he was 9130, <laughs> So if you're listening, Mr. 9130, um, I listen hope to you're the happy. crew. Yeah, listen to the crew, <laughs> please, next time. So the other rollover on Friday, I'll take credit for this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it was a really, really built samurai. And then this is the samurai. I think I've talked about him before on the ep- on the podcast. Yeah. He was, I ran into him out at Bear Valley OHV on Father's Day this year. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's the same one. He has a stretched wheelbase to 118, 120 for a Whoa. samurai, which is like double what they normally are almost. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, he was on 35s. It was a complete tube chassis with kind of like a samurai panels put under it in under the yeah. chassis kind of thing. Um, and so <clears throat> he came right up the center line, didn't really have any issues. And I was, I was looking at him as he was coming up. I was like, Hey, do you want to run the center line? Cause I was like, I've seen this guy wheel before. I'm pretty sure he can do it. I know his rig is capable of it. And um, there wasn't really too many people coming up at the time. Sure. So I was like, hey, do you want to run the center line? He kind of looked at me. He goes, okay, sure. Yeah. So he came right on up, walked right up the first part. And then the second part, he was doing fine. He looked like he was on the right line and everything. And I was kind of spotting him, kind of not, just kind of from the side. Yeah. Because I figured he would walk right up it and not have too many issues. And so I was like, oh, yeah, right there. Just take it easy and go up. And when you get to this point here, put your sidewall against that rock. And that's going to help you grab traction to get up this part. Right. You just have to go really slow and don't spin. Because if you start spinning, you're going to spin and it's going to lose it's traction slide, slide you into the you hole. Into the hole. Yeah. So, he seemed like he understood and like he knew what was going on. He had experience uh, with this kind of stuff before. And um, I turned around to talk to somebody. Somebody was asking me a question behind me. And I turned around to talk to them. And all of a sudden, I hear the crowd go, whoa. (laughs) And I turn around. He's rolling over like right at me. (laughs) Oh, dang. And so, I had to jump down out of the way. There were two or three of us kind of standing there. We jumped down out of the way. And it was a really slow roll. Yeah. Um. And so, as he's rolling, he puts his arm out his window. Oh, no. And try, and I'm and just all I can see as I'm trying to get out of the way, but I'm like, his arm is right there. Yeah. And he's going to lose his arm if he doesn't pull it in. So, I'm yelling at the top of my lungs, get your hand in, get your hand in, get yeah. your hand in. Finally, literally the last second possible, he pulls his hand in as the rig goes, boom, right down over where his hand was. Oh, man. Then it just kind of, once it rolled over on its side, then it picked up speed rolling and ended up completely on its lid um, down in the bypass lane. (laughs) So, it wasn't a flop. It was a complete rollover and it ended up on its lid in the bypass lane. I'm looking at this now. We got him out. He had a a big yard sale. (laughs) There was a lot of stuff that fell out of his rig. Um, And so, we picked up all this stuff. We got him out. I was like, are you okay? And he was really shooken up. Oh, yeah. And it was it was so bad. It was the point where I was like, hey, I need you to calm down. Let get the adrenaline done so that we know if you have any injuries. Yeah. He was that jacked up. Wow. And he was moving at 100 miles a second. He was like, hey, should I get out? Do I need to do this? What can I do? Can I do this? And I was like, dude, just go over here. Sit down. Chill. Yeah, Let we'll us take, take care, care of it. it. You just need to calm down. Like, yeah. And I was trying to say this to him without telling him, hey, get out of here and calm down. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I was like, hey, just hang out over here. We got this. You know, your rig is fine. We have everything off. Let's pick up all your stuff. There's nobody behind you. We're not in a hurry. So he's hanging out outside of his rig and we're kind of looking at the situation. I'm like, I wonder if we can do the same thing that we just did for that black TJ, roll him back over and then pull him sideways. Yeah. The problem was that he was at even more of an angle <laughs> and... um. And if we had rolled in so that no matter what, if we rolled him over, he wouldn't have stayed no matter what. Sure. And so, and he was kind of at a point where um, we were going to have to pull him sideways or 
pull him uh, perpendicular, so that pull him like we did with the TJ backwards. It, the TJ, I, I think you're talking about, is the first day. The the second day. So the guy. So the speed first racer, guy cut speed the racer. Caution tape. Okay, because you said the black TJ was the other one. That oh, the first sorry, day. both of them were black TJs. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the speed racer. We had we figured we were going to have to <laughs> Go pull him up. Racer. But the problem is, is that he was not going to stay up. The speed racer guy stayed up on, would have stayed up yeah. on his own. Okay. We just kept the cable there for support as we we're moving him. Right. The samurai was not going to stay up on its own from where oh, he okay. was. Yeah. I was like, okay. So what we did was, I was like, we can do the exact same thing, but we're going to start moving him off of the hill. And he, he ended up facing opposite direction of the the previous guy okay so he was now facing downhill he was 45 degrees downhill other, yeah. <laughs> yeah um we ended up pulling him over i was like okay as we once we get him up to where he's essentially on two wheels and being held there then we'll start pulling him yeah on those two wheels before his other two wheels come in contact with anything because there was also another rock right there so i was like i don't want to have him come down and then i guess we could have held and manipulated his angle um, right. That he was leaning at by the other winch, but so, so we you, did that. You had three winches on mm -hmm. him again. Yep, and so, more or less same thing. Kind of one near mm -hmm. the front, one on each, front, one on the back, one and one back. ninety perpendicular to the the roll. Yeah. So and Corey and every same three, not same three guys. It was a different guy at the front end. Um, but Corey and Jeff did the same thing they did. So they were all in it, and we ended up having him rolled back over and safe and level on flat ground. Within like 20 minutes. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, because I was like, hey, did you, we've done this already Did now. you do we your hand signals do. again? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> I stood in the exact same spot almost, did the exact same hand signals, and it worked out awesome. We had him rolled over, and we had the hill cleared in like 20, 25 minutes. Perfect. Nice. So, uh, that experience. went really well. Yeah, experience <laughs> helps. So, that was fun. And then uh, Friday was just a really, really long day. We had a couple of issues on the trail where there was a guy, a uh, Jeep with a Dana 35 axle, um that broke his c clip go figure um really? just above i know right <laughs> huh never heard of that happening before <laughs> um and broke his c clip right above windchill three okay and he was we couldn't we were having trouble sourcing an axle for him and everything and so finally got to the point where we had the the very last uh, uh trail crew drag for the trail pick up the guy and his two dogs yeah um and, and bring him on up. Leave no, sorry. Rig. The drag didn't do it. Windchill 1 did it. So, the Windchill 1 and 2 crew, yeah. they came up the trail after the trail run had passed them. Yeah. So, they were at the very back end of the trail run. They came up the trail because they wanted to hang out and have a good time Friday night up at camp. Mm, yeah. And so, as they came up, they ended up picking up the guy and his two dogs yeah, uh, and left his Jeep there uh, b between Windchill 3 and Windchill 3.5. Wow. Okay. So, they had it pulled off to the side of the trail and left it there. And um, they put together a recovery mission to go down and get the guy's Jeep um, late on Saturday. Oh, wow. Okay. So, they brought him up and um, so he was all safe and everybody was fine. And then we had another rig that had died due to electrical issues. He couldn't get the rig started and we didn't know why. Hmm. Um, like four or 500 yards before Windchill 5. So, I, I made the decision. I was like, he's only that far away. Let's just get him up out of here um, since we don't need to take him very far. Let's get him up out of here and we'll get him back to camp and he can work on his rig at camp. I radioed back up to base, up to Meadow Camp, up to Meadow Lake and said, hey, uh, if you guys can get me a, as the biggest, heaviest, most powerful buggy in camp um, to come down, we can have this guy pulled up and out of here in about an hour, I think. Yeah. And so they so said, okay, let me, let's look around. We'll figure out, you know, what we have back at camp and, and see what we can find. See who's willing to come down. And I was like, okay, cool. And did, so. Did our uh, friend come down? No. Oh. Well, one of our, one of my buddies, I know both of them, uh, came down, but they sent down a JK, a two door JK with no front lockers. <laughs> Okay. A, a, a four door JK, a four door JK that was really built. Um, he just doesn't have and there's a four door JKs don't have enough power to pull a rig dead out of four dice. Right. And there's a really really nice, really well built FJ40 that came down. He was on 42 TSLs uh, swampers. Yeah. The problem with him though was that he was too tall. 
Oh, yeah. If he, if he started pulling and yanking on somebody to get them up and over rocks or up and over the obstacles, uh, he would just start, you know, getting and way wobbly. off camber and wobbly. Yeah. So Did he have a V8 um, in it? He did, yep. Yeah. Uh, so, he had the power. He had the tires. He just didn't have the stability. Sure. So, uh, so I was like, whatever, we'll make this work. <laughs> <laughs> and so... Um, we got him up to the, the bottom of the windshield by pulling him. At one point, we ended up strapping. Uh, we had a strap going. So, the four-door JK was leading, the FJ40, and then um, the dead rig, and then the two-door JK. And the okay. two-door JK was just kind of like helping give instructions with everything. Yeah, or and pulling backwards Or if pulling needed. backwards if he needed. Yeah. So, we had a winch line going from the FJ40 to the four-door JK, the lead vehicle. Yeah. With also a strap there. Why didn't you just ru- run the winch down around the FJ40's axle and back up to the frame and just suck the axle down? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think about doing that. <laughs> I've tried actually kind of doing that before, and it cut my winch line. Oh, really? Yeah, I snapped my winch line. Kind of, I, I ran the winch line down from the forerunner underneath my axles yeah. to the car behind me. <laughs> the rig behind okay, me, because yeah. I have the gussets on each of my axles. There's nothing really to, for it to get caught on underneath sure. the vehicle. And uh, it ended up cutting the line on my fair lead. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, anyways. Um, I'm just saying suck the front of the so FJ40 not as wobbly. Down. Yeah. Yeah. If you had suck down winches front and rear, it would have been, I think, just fine. But uh, it got to some points where um, the FJ40 wasn't able to pull the dead vehicle by itself. Yeah. And so, we hooked up his winch to the JK and then a strap from the JK to the, the FJ40. And whenever they were going down the trail just fine, they were running on the strap and yeah. had a little slack in the winch. When he got stuck from the dead rig, he pulled he, his winch in and was able to pull him and the dead rig up forward over got whatever it. obstacle was. Then they would yeah. let the winch back out and continue on the straps. That's funny. Yeah. So, we did that for that four or 500 yards to the winch hill. Okay. And then that bottom ledge on the winch hill, um, what we had to do was... We backed the FJ40 up in the corner right there. It's a Mm -hmm. really freaking steep corner. Yeah. And had him winch a single line to the dead rig and got him up to that corner. Meanwhile, we had the four-door JK set up on the the top of the ledge, kind of off to the side and had a ran a line at up the to top a tree. top or in the middle. In the middle section. Yeah, okay. So we ran it to a tree and then down that ledge, snatch blocked it. And down. snatch blocked it. So okay. we had a, a decent angle to bring him up that ledge there. And so we did that got the rig to the, the ledge and then those two Jeeps, uh, the Jeep and the FJ40 got him across the center section up yeah. to that really gnarly hairpin turn. Yes. Now, that gnarly hairpin turn was going to be interesting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't going to be easy regardless. That was the fun one, in my opinion. What we ended up doing, we set up a, a Jeep that had 200 foot of synthetic winch line on his winch. Wow. Yeah. I was like, geez. Uh, but we set him up at the top of the bypass area, bef- uh, which is the top of the center section. Mm-hmm. And we ran a line all the way out to a tree that was up on top of that corner, that hairpin corner, and then down to the Jeep. Okay. So, we had this line running about 20, 30 feet up in the air. Wow. Up to the okay. tree, snatch blocked, and then down to the Jeep. How did you get up in the tree? We climbed. It was up in the hill. So, we had to climb the hillside oh. to put the sna- the strap on the tree and then okay. the winch block and then put the line in and everything. Okay. How far was the tree away from the corner and the rig? The corner and the rig, the tree... I mean, straight line, if you if you consider from point A to point B not going uphill, it was maybe 20, 25 feet. Okay. But uphill, because of that added yeah. height in it, um, it was probably 50 feet or wow. so away. That's a... Who has a 200-foot synthetic line? I have no clue. <laughs> but it was... The, the whole pole <laughs> itself was about 300 feet, um, 250 to 300 feet, because we ended up free spooling out the dead rig's winch line... Oh, to match, to, to meet. To, to make enough line. <laughs> wow. To get and you left all. some turns on. We left uh, eight turns minimum on yeah. each one. Okay. But yeah, it was, it was, it was a crazy pull. So we, that, we used that pull to get the rig up and around this hairpin turn. And then it wasn't quite a straight enough pull for the Jeep over at the, with the 200 foot winch line to get him without pulling him into a couple of trees. <laughs> so then. We used those couple of trees to set up another snatch block to a Jeep, a rig that was up on top of the hill to come down to that snatch block and then go out 
to the rig to get him up to that tree. Once he was up and around that tree, then the, uh, then the, the other rig can do a straight 200. pull. <laughs> yeah, the 200 foot line could do a straight pull. Wow. So we did that, and then we pulled out the 200 foot um, line and did a snatch block to um, the dead rig's winch line. Mm-hmm. So we had a two to one pull at least, and we pulled him right up that that little ledge there on the bypass line. Okay. And got him up to the top of that, and then we short strapped him. So mm-hmm. we got like a four, put a strap in there to be up like five a feet. Tree saver strap, essentially. Yeah. Um, and pulled him up the rest of the hill to the top, where there was a giant rock, and then we were kind of a little bit stuck. We couldn't get him up and around that. But during that short strap time, that's when a bunch of people started showing up from the Meadow Lake campground because dinner was done. Oh, really? <laughs> dinner was done. And there was a lot of talk <laughs> that there was a, a vehicle extraction going on at Winchell 5. Uh-huh. So, all of a sudden, as we're doing the short strap uh, pull up the hill, about 30, 40 people show up. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, 30 people, 30, 40 people show up. And we've already been doing this for about four hours now three right. and a half to four hours and um they're they're now everybody's giving their input right yes hey you guys should be doing this why are you doing that you need to be doing this look out for this look out for that and so finally the guy it was late in the day it was by this time it's 11 o'clock at night ten thirty at night oh dang so we're doing all this in the dark i had been up since 6 a.m yeah to get the river run down the winch hill and then um get everybody else up it and so I'd been up since 6 a.m. About 8 p.m. My brain shut off. <laughs> 8 30, <laughs> somewhere around there. And I told um, the guy in the two door, JK, Kenny, really cool guy. Um, but he gets a little fiery from sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. And so I said, uh-huh. Kenny, you're taking over. You know, you're in charge of all the winch poles. I'm going to still ch- stay in charge of the situation, kind of overlooking everything. Um, and so if I see anything or I need to make a final decision, I'm I, I want it followed through me. But for the most part, I, I you and I think alike when it comes to recovery stuff. So I'm gonna have you be in charge. He said okay, mm-hmm. and we did that a long time ago. And so when, when we started the winching up the bottom ledge, yeah. And so um, now all these people are showing up and barking orders and everything. And Kenny flipped. At oh them. yeah, yeah. He flipped and he's he starts you know like getting hostile towards these people and one person in the crowd decides to get hostile back. Oh, dang. and start taking. And I'm like, oh my god, this is not helping. And I had to get in between. I was like, you guys, this is not helping at all. And Kenny yeah. goes, well, can keep him the that fucking break away from me. And yeah, he's flipping out. And the other guy's flipping out. And so I split him up. And so I just kind of I called everybody in the crowd. I said, hey, we appreciate the ideas. But ultimately, if you have an idea, bring it to me. Mm-hmm. Do not be barking it out. We will yeah. take your idea into consideration. And if we deem it a good idea, we will enact it. But do not be barking out orders. We are trying to get this done safely. Mm-hmm. And safety is a top priority. If it takes a little longer because we're being safe about it, then that's how it's going to be. Because people right. are like, you guys are taking so long. You could do this and it'd be so much quicker. And I'm like, yeah, yeah but there's a giant hole there. If we do that, there's a good chance he's going to roll all the way down the hill. Right. <laughs> so anyways... Right. Finally, right after, right after that, about five minutes, six minutes later, um, uh, this really built buggy pulls up. Um, essentially, that matched the description of what I originally <laughs> asked for. Um, and he's like, "Hey, I'm I'm here. If you guys need any help at all, you can. We can use my rig." And I was like, "Oh my god, thank you! Come in here. We're gonna do two short winch pulls, like five feet each, to get him up around this, get his friend in around this rock, and then we're gonna then- attach him to, and you're just gonna pull him up to main camp." He goes, "Okay, cool. I can do that." Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we pulled him in and winched him up and within, you know, 15 minutes, we yeah. had him up and finished and done. Nice. The ultimate awesome thing about this guy's rig, his license plate was tow you out. <laughs> <laughs> so, as we, we, hooked awesome. up, we hooked him up to the strap, you know, because he came to us facing forward and finally got turned around and backed up to hook the strap on. And I was hooking up the strap and I start to get up and right in front of my face is his license plate and I just started <laughs> laughing really, really hard. Um, what was the buggy like? The buggy was, I I think it was like a CJ7 tub uh-huh. but he was on 40, 42s, 44s, I don't know, something like that. I've seen a lot of big tires so now like 40s are starting to look like 35s to me. Yeah. But he was on really big tires, four linked, really heavy. Um, mm-hmm. He was on at least Dana 60s front and rear, maybe more. Um, but he had a big old V8 in there and had okay. no problems pulling the guy dead. Cool. So, 
Yeah. We got him hooked up and he was back in camp in like 20 minutes. After that? <laughs> After that. Oh, that's awesome. And we ended up spending from 7 p.m. until midnight. 7 p.m. was when we started the, the extraction. Midnight was when we got everybody back to camp. Wow. So, it was it was a very long day, a long five hours. It was frustrating, but we made it out. Nobody had extra damage to their vehicles. Everybody was safe. Mm-hmm. Um and and we made it all happen. So that awesome. was Friday, and then Saturday we had no drama whatsoever. We didn't have any. Oh no, we did have a little bit of drama. <laughs> <laughs> so Saturday there was a, a couple of rigs, um, uh, electric blue, just complete tube frame buggy, and uh, an old beat up Toyota pickup, like a, it almost looked like Bobcat, but it was a dark green color on okay. Dana sixties full widths and forty two IROX. Oh wow, okay. Um, they came up and throughout the day, there were the, we had a river run on Saturday as well that went down to committee and back up. These two rigs would be going in front behind each other, right? And then yeah. they would pull next to each other, block the entire trail, and get out and drink. <laughs> and just block everybody behind them. And right. they were doing that all day long to the river run, where the river run is like, come on, guys, just let us get past. And they would have to sit there and wait for these two guys yeah. to get back, be done drinking, get back in their rigs and go. Right. So, um, they were also, you know, getting super high as they were going. Oh. So, um, I taught Verdi a new term called crossfaded. <laughs> <laughs> he hadn't heard of that before. Okay. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, so they were just getting super cross faded in the trail, causing a lot of problems all day long. And finally, they get up to the wind chill. And uh, at this time, this is the time when we had put together the recovery crew, the extraction crew for the Jeep at wind chill three with the broken Dana 35 axle. Mm-hmm. And so we were trying to give those guys priority traffic coming down the hill. Okay. So that they can just go down, get by everybody, and then the rest of the trail run can continue up and get through. Sure. Makes so, sense. These two guys in these really built rigs come up and and I said, hey, just stop here for a second. The buggy came up the bottom shelf and stopped in the center. And I said, he goes, he goes, why do you have the center line there um, blocked off? I was like, because, you know, we had some issues yesterday of people coming up the center line, they rolled. And every time somebody rolls, we have to shut down the hill for an hour and a half to two hours to get it cleared and get them out of there. And he goes, well, can I do it? I'm not going to roll. I said, I agree. I don't think you would roll. You're very well built, but... There's a chance if you do roll, then there's only four rigs left behind you for the entire day. If you roll, it's going to take those four rigs an extra two hours to get up to main camp. Yeah. I said, if you want to really do the center line, just wait here 10 minutes. We'll get those four rigs past you. Mm -hmm. And then the hill's yours. I'll open up the hill. That's the last we have for today. I'll open up the hill and you guys can have fun, do whatever you want. Yeah. And so he goes, he kind of looks at he. I could tell he's a little upset about it, but he goes, all right, that sounds fair. Yeah. I'll, I can wait. I said, okay. So, I went down to talk to his buddy who was coming up in the Toyota and I just told him to wait down there. Hold, hold, stop. And he's looking at me as I'm telling him to stop and he just kind of looks at me and keeps going. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. stop. He keeps going. And so, I kind of run down the hill and I get in front of him and I'm like, yeah. stop. <laughs> and so, he's like, why? Why do I need to stop? And I was like, so, I explained him the situation. He kind of goes, oh, oh no, okay, that makes sense. That's fair. I'll kind of pull off to the side here and let everybody buy. I said, okay, yeah. cool. Thanks, man. And literally, as he's saying that, his buddy in the blue buggy just stomps on the gas, goes, Wah! and just goes up and around the hairpin turn. Yeah. And then starts immediately cutting and going up the hill. <laughs> okay. And I'm just kind of looking at him. And the other spotters that are up at the top of the hill, they were working the top this day and I was working the bottom. They're kind of like looking at me like, what do we do? And I just said, I just kind of shook my head. I was like, I don't know. I just, just let him up. And so, because we had another rig coming down. Yeah. At the same time, this guy is trying to go up. Oh, geez. And so, I told the spotter, I said, just have the other rig stop and wait. This guy is not going to clear out. He's not listening. Um, let's, you know, just let him get by. It'll be the quickest and easiest way. And then we can have our, or continue our plan here. Yeah. And so, this guy, the vehicle's going up and he's spinning out and falls down into that hole. Uh-huh. And he goes up on two wheels and I'm just sitting here like, God Damn it. These guys, (laughs) these motherfuckers. And um, he was able, luckily, to come back down and very slowly crawled his way out of it. Oh, geez. But I was like, oh, if he had rolled, I would have lit into him so hard. And so, he makes it up the hill. And after he makes up the hill, 
he turns and then spins out and shot rocks at the Winchell 5 crew, the other volunteers at the top of the hill there. Oh. And I didn't know about that part. I didn't see him do that. Um, and so I let the, I said, okay, go on ahead. Your buddy's not going to listen to us. So, you know, there's no sense in letting you guys split. Just go ahead, get out of here, get out of our hair. Yeah. So that we can continue what we're doing. And so the Toyota went up and he did the same thing. Once he got to the top, he turned and spun out and shot rocks at him. What? Yeah. And I'm like, these guys are going to freaking, and I saw that one. So like, these guys are going to kill somebody. Yeah. And so, uh, after we got our crew up and the other rig down, our crew up, I was talking to some of the bystanders. The bystanders told me that both of those guys did that. And they were like, what is going on in those guys? And I was like, I don't know. Some people just don't listen. They want to be jerks. They want to do yeah. what they want to do and have zero regard for anybody around them. And he goes, he goes, you know, there's rangers back at Meadow, at, uh, Meadow Base, Meadow Lake, Meadow Lake. Um, base camp. And I was like, really? He goes, yeah, there's rangers there every day. Uh, those guys were intoxicated, right? I was like, yeah, they were hammered and they were high. Yeah. And he goes, he goes, just call the Rangers and tell them what happened. Yeah. And uh, and see if you can. So I radioed it into base camp. Uh-huh. Base camp told the Rangers and the Rangers ended up pulling those guys over as soon as they showed up in camp. <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunately, the Rangers pretty much told them that they were not worth the... Effort. Um, the effort to tow their vehicle out, impound it, arrest the people, um, get, do all the paperwork for the DUIs and all this other stuff, and pretty much just gave him a slap on the wrist and let him go. And I was wow. like, that really sucks. Those guys could have killed one of my volunteers yeah. very easily, mm-hmm. and they just kind of got away with it. So, that was the drama on Saturday. Everything right. else went just fine. And the bad part about that is then, I mean, what now they know that they can do stupid stuff and they're going to pretty much get they away, get with, away it. with it. Yeah. So yeah, that was really annoying. Um, but afterwards, uh, we, after the, the trail crew, the trail run got up, I opened up the windchill mm-hmm. and all the, the rigs from windchill, uh, two, three, and four, the workers, all the workers, all yeah. the crew, and they all have really built buggies. <laughs> oh yeah, like they're all b- buggied out. There was a full size Dodge in there. Oh really? Um, it was really nice. cool. So I got a bunch of pictures of those guys, and those guys came up and put on a big show. Oh yeah, on the windshield. Now that I have it open, I'm like, hey, cool. I don't have to control anything. You guys can do whatever you want. Yeah, and they just put on an awesome show for about an hour and a half, two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. So um, uh, that was really fun. That was kind of the highlight of Saturday. Um, and yeah, it was, uh, that was kind of like, that was Sierra Trek. And then on Sunday, uh, when I was leaving, my fuel pump gave out on me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was able to get it working enough to make it back home. And then, uh, I came and stopped at your place just to mm. say hi, cause I was driving by down 80. Yep. Yep. And, um, and so I came by and I was like, I tried to start the rig and it wouldn't start. <laughs> and you were nice enough to give me a ride over to O'Reilly's to get a new fuel pump at 830 at night. And <laughs> Had it installed in the rig and <laughs> had it installed in the rig and, and made it home and then got out to the rig this morning and it was gone. So I guess my, my fuel pump repair worked very well. <laughs> yeah. And the full tank of gas. <laughs> and the full it. tank of gas helped as well. <laughs> that was Sierra Trek. Really awesome event. Um, they set a record on the raffle. Oh, yeah. So they, they set another record for how much uh, money was collected and all the money from the raffle goes straight to California Four Wheel Drive Association oh, to cool. pay for lawyers and, and, and lobbyists mm-hmm. to help keep our trails open, not only here in California, but um, Cal Ford donates to Blue Ribbon Coalition and other um, entities across the nation to help keep trails open in yeah. those states. Excellent. Uh, yeah, it's a great event. It's been going on for a long time. Uh, it went very well this year. No issues. Um, other than the, the three rollovers, one of which I'll take responsibility for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was fun. So that's Sierra Trek. I hope you guys, anybody out there, if you want to volunteer, uh, we're going to try and coordinate Winchell 5 again. I think a different club is going to be taking over another club I'm associated with, uh, the Gold Hills Posse, and they're going to take it over, I think, or try and get people to take it over and, and run Winchell 5 because the guys from that club that came out had a really good time. They loved it. Cool. So That's awesome. Um, hopefully, I'll just be able to settle down and just do the communications next year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> instead of that'd both. That'd probably and, be a little bit easier. 
Yeah, it would, you know, it was, it was fun. The recovery stuff was fun, but I'm definitely like drained oh, I of energy from everything. You were so. exhausted when you stopped by the place yeah. the shop and <laughs> said hi. <laughs> yeah. I could see it in your eyes. Yeah. So yeah, that's Sierra Trek. Fun event. Good times. Um, I ran around the whole weekend on three and a half PSI, which was fabulous. It was like being on coilovers. <laughs> I was able to shoot out Meadow Lake Road at like 30, 35 miles an hour down everything and not really feel any of the bumps whatsoever. So, uh, yeah, that was, that was it. Dang, that's yeah. a totally crazy weekend to me. It was it was a very crazy <laughs> weekend. Did you get to hang out with our friends Verde and Chris? Uh, a tiny bit. Uh, yeah. We got to hang out next to the Peter Heater okay. on uh, Saturday night. That was really the only night we had available. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, a lot of people hadn't seen the Peter Heater yet. Oh, yeah. So um, we're going to... I think I'm going to try and sit down with uh, Jason... And see if we can put together a patent on it and start marketing it. Oh, really? The problem, because everybody there was like, I need one of these. Can you make me one? Can oh, we, yeah. I'm, I'll pay uh-huh. for it. I don't care. Whatever you want, I need one. <laughs> um, and Forest Service loved that thing as well, too, because it, it's all contained. Right. Um, all the fire is contained. You can let it burn and go to bed and not have to worry about it getting out or sparks mm-hmm. or embers going anywhere. Um, so, we've even had like Forest Service come up to us during fire restrictions yeah. and say, that's awesome. Oh, <laughs> and that's like, sweet. let us use it during for during fire restrictions. So yeah, as long as you have a permit, a campfire right. permit, and you know the the dangers of everything. So mm-hmm. and know how to handle your your embers and ash responsibly afterwards. So um, yeah, it's an awesome thing. And everybody was like, I need one of these. I'll pay for it. How much do you want? So yeah, I got to talk to Verdi and see if he wants to pursue. Um, actually making a bunch of those. I don't know if he's going to want to put that much effort into it. That's cool though. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, it was fun. It's always fun up there. It's a beautiful area. Meadow Lake Campground mm-hmm. is is gorgeous. There's a lot of hiking, a lot of mining stuff to see up in that area. If you just yeah. go up and, and hike around for the weekend, don't even do any wheeling on Fort Ice. It's beautiful out there. Um, the lake has pretty decent fishing. Uh, just get out to the middle of it. Um, or, lots of hiking or near the dam or near the dam. The dam has good fishing as well. I learned that one on the wheeling wine and whiskey <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. uh, podcast. Yeah. Their most recent one. Yep. There's, uh, the Pacific crest trail goes like right next to like oh, within a cool. hundred feet of Meadow Lake road there. Uh-huh. So if you're into hiking the Pacific crest trail, you can go and stop at Meadow Lake campground, um, that area there. So it's a, it's a really fun place. So yeah. Check out Sierra Trek next year. Yeah, and support Cal Four Wheel. I mm-hmm. mean, because they just do amazing, amazing things for uh, all of us off roaders, and mm-hmm. you know, keeping trails open and allowing us to go wheeling and locations, and and yep. trying and working on opening new trails or trails mm-hmm. that have been closed. Yep, one hundred percent support Cal Four. It's it's well worth the. I think the membership is up to forty five dollars a year right now. Mm-hmm. Um, if you ever ever take your rig on to dirt in California, um, $45 is a very, very small price to pay to ensure that we still get to keep putting our wheels on dirt in California. Yeah. So, um, I'm a huge believer in that. And I, I, I'm also a huge believer that if you're not helping and getting a membership with mem- organizations like Corva and Cal4, um, that you're, you're not using your off-roading recreation responsibly. You're not helping to take care of the things that you're recreating with. So, um, it's a very small price to pay, 45 bucks a year. Yeah. I think Corva is 40 a year, something like that's around the same price. Right. And, and both those organizations do a lot. A lot of the money they, that they have goes into um, litigations to keeping mm-hmm. our trails open. So Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. That I think that wraps up Sierra Trek. Yeah. In an hour and a half. In an hour and a half. So, <laughs> and this is why we're doing two episodes a week now and you yes, guys get to definitely. listen to this. So, um, I didn't have to skip anything. You guys got all the details of the recoveries and the rollovers and the, the excitement of the dead vehicle being pulled out and, um, the Dana 35 axles and, and everything else that goes on in Sierra Trek. So, um, hooray for two episodes a week. Now let's just see if we don't kill ourselves trying to do two episodes a week definitely yeah <laughs> we may regret um we're committing to this at a later time down the road but we'll yeah. see yeah we can always cut back i think yeah that's true we can always cut back so anyways any last words for any of our listeners out there i'm gonna be going to sierra track next year 
Atta I wasn't boy. able to make it this year. Atta boy. Yeah. And with that, my friends, keep crawling.